Comic Fam. Thank you so much for watching this video and Happy New Year. Russ, how you feeling, man? New I'm Year. Great, Tom. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to the fam out there. Big thank you and congratulations to Ian Scott. He's the winner of last week's top 10 giveaway. We're sending him this absolute carnage number five so variant. Pretty. It's freaking gorgeous. And we're chatting about the top 10 hottest comics of the week for one reason only. Because it is Friday and we are trying to bring you the hottest up-to-date information brought to you by Key Collector Comics, the number 58 most influential comic book influencer? That's right. This is a list that Bleeding Cool puts out. I didn't even know this was a thing until I saw the repost, but congratulations to Key Collector. He beat out Greg Capullo. It's really, really actually cool. So yes, get in on this. Use code TOM101 for a free week of the Key Collector app and see what you're missing out on. Congratulations to Key Collector, clearly making a difference in the comic book community. Oh yeah. And if you want to make a difference to your collecting, well, make sure you download it. But Go a step further and use the code TOM101 to get a free week subscription. Let's jump right into this list, Russ, at number 10. We got a brand new year and we got Jeff Lemire to kick it off. Black Hammer number one. Now, we were talking about this last year, but there has been reconfirmation that they are still in production on Black Hammer, and Jeff Lemire seems very, very excited about this. He's saying that not only is the script for the pilot written, he's happy with it, and he's hinting that there may be some type of universe at play, okay. not just in the comics, because we were talking about this Hammerverse weeks ago. Sure. No, we're talking about taking the Hammerverse to television. We've heard about like Millar mm -hmm. possibly bringing some stuff to Netflix. Heck, even Liefeld was saying he had some hopes there. Right. Maybe Lemire is going to make it happen. And it has people pushing this Black Hammer number one to new ground. $35 average sales. We're seeing a height at $135 for 9.8 copies. But that San Diego Comic Con variant. I'm talking about the one with like the rooftop. Mm -hmm. It's great color work and it's going for over $200 now. That is really, really crazy. And you know this book is moving fast because two weeks ago there were eight copies sold and this last week there were 19. So twice as many copies in the last week. Let's take a look at number nine because I am so stoked. We were chatting about Micronauts just a few weeks ago. Time to put ROM on the list. It's so great to have a list with my favorite Space Knight, your favorite Space Knight, everyone's favorite Space Knight, ROM. Number one on the list. It's so great to see again another Bill Mantlo character that is just going to be seeing more love. We know that Micronauts are in development and they're going to be making a movie. More of the Microverse is happening and the next logical step is ROM. There's a big Hasbro media deal out there and we know that he's one of the intellectual properties Copies of number one are going solidly for 30 and up, and we are seeing 9.8s going for $275. Dude, and this intellectual property that was purchased, I mean, Hasbro made a huge deal. We're talking like a $1.3 billion deal. Wow. You know they're going to try to compete for some of that Marvel cinematic space. Oh, absolutely. You know, and ROM is that bet. And what's cool is there's a handful of keys in this run, but they've largely gone unloved for a long time. I right. mean, that last issue is a great book because it's super tough to find in high grade. Oh, and even earlier on, you've got the two issues with the X-Men crossover, and those are just really great books that everyone ignores. Those 9.8s are scarce. I think that that's actually a pretty fair number in this market prior to any option news. Number eight this week, we have Marvel graphic novel number four. This is the first appearance of the New Mutants. Whoa, wait, what? We're putting New Mutants on the list? I thought the movie was done. So we now have confirmation that on January 6th, we are going to get the new trailer for the New Mutants movie. And even though this was supposed to come out a few months ago, there is confirmation from director Josh Boone that there will be no changes made to this movie. That's big news. Yeah, and it's bizarre because post Dark Phoenix and just the horrendous, I don't even want to call it X-Men film, that that was... Everyone thought that this wasn't happening. Right. You know, Kevin Feige is getting involved. And if there was something going to happen, they were going to change a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. And now we're hearing, no, we're getting it as it was made and intended, which could be a good thing. But this is a very unique book because it's oversized, technically a graphic novel. Right. What are the prices for this book? So solidly at $100 for a raw, and we've seen 9.8s going for 800 And yes, keep in mind, it is magazine sized. It's 
48 pages, 64 pages. It's a little bit thicker. It's one of those great Marvel graphic novels, but yeah, just being oversized means it's going to be very, very tough to find in high grade. Yeah, that 9.8 market's going to be strong. People don't even want to try to do it themselves. And that's why we're seeing a 700% increase in copies sold in just seven days. Number seven on the list, we have Journey into Mystery number 622. This is the first appearance of Ickle, which is Loki backwards. What? Ickle. This is the same run with Kid Loki. Mm -hmm. I got to refresh myself on this run. It's been a long time. But yeah, there's like a future Loki. And Loki's like, no, you're the future Loki. You're not Loki me. So we're going to call you Ickle. Yeah, give him another name. That's right. And we have rumors that this is going to be the primary antagonist in the new Loki run which we were speculating last year, and we were seeing a lot of rumors that this Loki may not be the same Loki that we're used to in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that we're going to see him go through time, maybe change genders, change age, and now we may see a completely different character in the future as a villain. It makes sense. First appearance of another villainy type Loki, solidly going for $10 for Roz. I know that we were getting $70 for a 9.8, and I mean, this is a fairly recent book. That's right. And one that no one was specking on. Oh, no. I'm talking a 2,800% increase in copies sold in as little as a week because of this news. But here's the kicker. Although we don't know for sure that this is going to happen, the rumors are that this may be the main villain in the Marvel Disney Plus universe. Can we call it the Disney Plus universe? The Disney Plus universe? I'll keep it, dude. <laughs> All right, number six universe. on the list. We got, what the heck, Cowboy Ninja Viking? This is an image comic. Never heard of it, six but issue miniseries. after reading the synopsis and then hearing what you had to say about it, because you just learned about this recently, too, in a weird way. Well, I, uh, I'm in. I want to read this. So I knew about this book, but I hadn't really thought about it forever. And this is actually about, there's an organization that hires people with multiple personalities, and there's a guy that has multiple personality disorder, and his three personalities happen to be a cowboy, a ninja, and a Viking. So he's really good at fighting and well we knew that last year we had chris pratt tied as the lead to this movie and then talks kind of moved and we didn't hear anything about it well now we have more confirmation that this movie is going to be made again again it's another one of those oversized magazine books it's a six issue miniseries the first couple are worth some money this book moved dramatically this week from 30 to 50 dollars almost immediately and we're seeing nine six going at 195 keep in mind since it is oversized and nine six is probably about as good as you're going to get from image Rumored to be back in production and Chris Pratt is involved. At least I hope he still is. Come on. That'd be so dope, dude. Just like number five on the list. When I saw the change in prices over this last couple months on this book, dude, it gave me chills. Are we going to see Dracula in the Marvel Universe? I sure as heck hope so. I know last summer we were talking about Tomb of Dracula 1. There was that fantastic D. Savage Shores number one second yeah. print variant that was the Tomb of... We, we, we mentioned it. It was like a $10 book, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't buy it yet. And then in a week, it was like 100 bucks. But the Tomb of Dracula number one, you and I were talking how criminally underpriced this book was. Wasn't that like the main discussion? It was. We're we, like, this should be over a grand at all day, a 9-8, and yep. it wasn't. It was like... 800 I it was, think it was not very expensive at you know summertime last year but tomb of dracula number one moving up drastically because rumors that dracula is gonna be part of the moon knight franchise you know what if they can bring in dracula as well as werewolf by night into the moon knight franchise Dude, favorite show already. i'm excited it's like, gonna be freaking yep, awesome but it's gonna be great let's report on these prices because this is like first off neil adams like fantastic cover very respected run, mm -hmm. but very underappreciated key, finally getting some love. So raw copies going for $100. Average sales. 9.8. Now there was a buy it now or best offer. The best offer was $2,500 in this last week for a 9.8. I think that's pretty telling because the spec market's getting aggressive for the characters that they feel like have room to grow. Mm -hmm. People starting to think that Dracula has some legs in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm excited, but seriously, a 400% increase in copies sold, that's something we got to be watching. Absolutely. Another thing we got to be watching is The Witcher Show on Netflix. Have you checked this out, Tom? Okay, so this is kind of fun. Never played the game. Erin has played the game, sure. though, and she freaking loves the game. Never played it. I thought I wouldn't be into this show mm -hmm. because I didn't, I didn't play the game. Right. So 
I played the first episode and within the first five minutes, you got this like creature, a, like just spider looking giant creature attacking the Witcher and he is like using a freaking sword to take him down. It's like Lord of the Rings on crack, dude. I am all in on this show. Which is why number four on the list this week, Witcher number one, which is $50 raw and $190 for a 9.8. And it has definitely been driven by this Netflix series. We knew that Henry Cavill was tied to this a long time ago. A lot of people have been talking about this. And it is now Netflix's most watched show ever. Dude, some members of the community are hitting me up. They're like, yo, did you watch The Witcher? Because it just came out. Right. I'm like, no, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to watch it this weekend. They're like, oh, I'm already done. Already watched it. (laughs) So a 229% increase in copies sold makes sense because people are watching it and then going to look for a comic book that was a video game adaptation, which are largely underprinted and missed, read aggressively, lower grade when you find them, and then they sell and surprise everybody in the comic market. I'm watching The Witcher. I'm watching this comic now. And I'm also watching number three on the list. Number three on the list, Meet the Scrolls, number one. Dude, I read about this synopsis before the comic came out. Mm-hmm. And I didn't put it on my poll list. I ended up picking up a second print because I was so intrigued. Sure. A family of scrolls who are undercover, the Warners. Mm-hmm. And they have to pretend to be a human family. I mean, the, the father works at Stark Industries. The mother is is like working for the government but they're here planning a secret invasion and this book is now on spec radar it's so great to know that we have a book like this that is supposed to be having more with this family the warners that again are scrolls pretending to be humans they're supposed to be showing up in road to empire which is another marvel miniseries that starts in march in response to someone saying that they enjoyed meet the scrolls this is what cb sabolsky said he said Funny you should mention it now, right after Incoming has also hit the shelves, as the character in this series will play an important role in some of Marvel's 2020 plans. Hmm, let this speculation begin. And has it begun? Meet the Scrolls, first appearance of the Warners. $5 average sales, but a $70 high at 9.8. And the change in just seven days was staggering. 1,800% increase in copies sold. Keep in mind, there is also a Scotty Young variant that has been selling briskly for a very good price. Yeah, and I'm watching that Scotty Young variant. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that people end up being surprised about. Right. Because they think, ah, oh, you know, my kids like it, so I'll pick one up. And then they realize, oh, wow, not a whole lot of people picked it up, yeah. and now I want it. <laughs> All right, number two on the list. Speculation going crazy Today, as we're filming this, we're getting mixed reports Mm -hmm. within a couple hours. Let's tell them about number two on the list because we got to talk about Angela Asgard's assassin. Angela Asgard's assassin, number one, is the first appearance of Sarah. Now, again, no real confirmation on this. There's speculation. Some things were said, but we are going to see our first transgender character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the speculation is that Sarah is going to be that character. Kevin Feige today during a press conference, a fan had asked him about LGBTQ characters, specifically the T. Kevin Feige frantically said, yes, absolutely, yes. That's two yeses. Feige replied, very soon in a movie we're shooting right now. But then Variety reports that that wasn't certain. Kevin Feige is saying that that wasn't to be considered confirmation. But clearly, with that number of yeses, it's got people speculating. Sarah is a angel from a lineage in Marvel Comics that is all male wingless angel. She's the only identifying non-male angel. Thus, the only Marvel character who is a transgender. This book, her first appearance, is spiking now. We are seeing solid sales of this book at $10 for a raw and $200 for a 9.8. Now, it's only been... A little less than a day since this spec news happened, which is why we're seeing 1,100% increase in copies sold. I think that number may be low. Do you know what else is low, Tom? The print run 
on our Thor exclusive. If you are not in on this mystery mail call, Thor, you gotta get it. We have a special in Hyuk Lee variant of Thor throttling Tony Stark Iron Man. The only way you can get this variant is by subscribing to the mystery mail call. Link in the bio down below. Every single one of you subscribers helps support the show and helps keep us in business. The link is in the description. Click it. Join the community. Help support the show. Get your Thor exclusive. And let's tell them about number one on this list. <sighs> number one on the list. Oh, my gosh. Um, Dude, let's tell them about number one, man. We should be proud of it because we freaking called that I'm this was going to happen. I'm very proud. Honestly, this is... Uh, okay, so my response last week, people have to understand that when I was explaining about the... I had not heard of this book. It, it doesn't mean that I wasn't paying attention. It means that a lot of these Walmart books, I just kind of fell off my radar. You just, they just alluded to it. We're putting Detective Comics, Batman Anniversary, the 80th Walmart exclusive on the list at number one, January week one. What's up? If you watched our week 52 list from last week, you saw that we did the yearly wrap up. And on this, there was a Walmart book. And I was incredulous number one. to this. Number one on the list, I was incredulous. There were a lot of people in the comments that were incredulous. I mean, people were like, why would you put a Walmart book? And in that video, we were talking about it selling for $40. Well, <sighs> The market has spoken. The crowds have spoken. We are seeing solid sales for over $100. Most of them are averaging $115 with a peak of $175. Now, over the last year, we have talked on multiple lists. Let's break it down. Some members of the community may not understand why some comic books may go up in value more than others. I want to break it down for some of our newbies. Some people may not understand that a Jim Lee cover on a low print run that was largely purchased and given to children that has a print count of what we now have from Grand Comics Database at under 3,500. Well, people are going like, oh, I don't really understand it. Well, the people who are maybe new and don't understand how comic books work, how collecting works, but we do. And we saw this book go for a quadruple price for a year. It was on Key Collector back in March. Mm -hmm. Bleeding Cool was posting about it back in March saying, we've never seen this issue before. Right. Quadruple cover price for a year. Nobody was covering it. No. Key Collector was covering it. Yeah. And then we talked about it last week. It was going for 10 times cover price when we talked about it. So my biggest complaint about these Walmart books, again, everyone can go back to any of our previous videos over the last year and a half. My biggest complaint is relative scarcity. And I know that that's why they're moving because they are tough to find. Well, when you're talking about 5,300 Walmarts across the country, 5,328 as of this morning is when I checked, and only half of them are getting comics generally, it's tough. Well, we have confirmation from the distributor that 56 stores across the country. There are 66 Walmarts in the state of Washington alone. 56 Walmart stores across the country got this book. So we're talking at 1% of the Walmart. You could visit 100 random Walmarts in the country and you would hit one of them that would have had this book. But it gets a little worse because oh why did this 80th anniversary special hit the shelves? Because it was the 80th anniversary. They put it out in March in April, mm -hmm. between that time frame, and they had it a, like an agreement with DC that these wouldn't just be thrown like in the back rack. Right. No, these would come in their own special box, which it did. Right. And it would be displayed on the end cap. Right. The money beats. And right now we're finding people not like finding them on that box. Because no, this happened back in March. No, what ends up happening is that when they don't sell out, what do they do with them? They move them to the back of the store. They <laughs> consolidate them. Right. So people right now are going to Walmart and they're hunting through, hunting through, to copy, 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 copy. Boom, one, one copy, right. pulls it out. Yeah, going for over $100. But you know what? Retelling a Batman story. First appearance of Robin retold. First appearance of Batman retold. Mm -hmm. First appearance of Miss Tompkins re retold. We have Ace the Bat Hound retold. A whole extra story that you can only read in this one book. And I'm going to top it off here because we know that these Walmart books are notorious for being low grade, right? They're oversized, really tough. But you know what was on the back of that comic book? 
Oh, it's an ad, Tom. Tell me about how awful this ad is. It's a Shazam ad. Okay. But you know what's not... like Shazam isn't what makes it awful to me, though. Mm -hmm. It's the black cover. Yep. It's all black. And rub is rub, so awful. And it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And people are posting that their copies have problems. It makes sense why we put this on the list last week and why we're putting it on number one this week. Well, last week when we saw this and put it on the list, there were two copies listed with four sales. There have been 60 since we posted our video last Friday. 60 sales. That's right. And those may sound like a really like big number and change because it is. A mm -hmm. lot of people are finding them, putting them on the internet now. But we're talking about, what, 1% of the supposed market hitting eBay? This is nothing. Right. All right. And speaking of which, since we're talking about the 80th anniversary, courtesy of Six Foot Publishing and Bill Sinkevich, we have the Batman 80th anniversary Bill Sinkevich cover signed by the legend himself. Comment down below. Let us know what you think about this list. It'll enter you to win this book. And I love this book because if you see Carrie's slingshot, there's actually a blue dot above it. That's not part of the art. That's actually Bill's thumbprint. That's right. I think so that's so cool. It is. I saw that and I'm like, oh, you know what? Some people would be upset, but that right there is Bill's fingerprint. I like his fingerprint. <laughs> I like it there. I think it belongs there. Right. Thank you so much to Key Collector, the best comic book app in the world, definitely for 2019 yep. and already starting to be in 2020. Big shout out to Bleeding Cool for putting Key Collector on that list. Makes me proud to have them as a sponsor. Use the code TOM101 to get a free one-week subscription. It's going to unlock so many dope subscriber benefits that you're going to start to find just like all these awesome comics you didn't even know existed on the hunt. And it's going to just make you want to pay for the whole service for the year. And I'll tell you one thing, you find that one book, it's going to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you even have customers going through your lawn boxes going, Russ, look what I found. I do. I tell them to use the app. I say, log into Key Collector before you go through my 50 cent bins. I'm sure there's stuff I've missed. <laughs> Dude, we see people all the time and they're like, Russ, it's like they found treasure in those boxes. Totally. And you're like, Love it. yep, I'm glad you found it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep track of it somehow. Comic fam, thank you so much for watching the video. Hit the like button if you found any benefit or any value to the content we do. We need your support. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, you got under two weeks to sign up to the mystery mail call, and we are getting dangerously close to selling out. So hit the link in the bio, join the community if you want to reserve your exclusive. But if you don't, it's okay. You can sign up next month because I just saw the cover for next month's... I can't can't even say it. It's so hot. It's so hot. I'm not going to tell it's, them. It's I almost scorching. told them. Ah. I, I, I'm not going to right. tell them anything. Shink. 